have to do a story on this. This is so ridiculous. Illinois will eliminate cash bail for some crimes, including second-degree murder. By the way, you're racist if you voice any criticism. So I added this to another video just recently, but Illinois non-detainable offenses beginning January 1st, 2023. Aggravated burglary, aggravated DUI, aggravated fleeing, arson, burglary, drug-induced homicide, intimidation, kidnapping, robbery, second-degree murder, threatening a public official. Under this new law, after being charged with the crimes listed, those arrested would be released without bail pending a court date. They have to post no bail. They'll be automatically released so they don't get any time in jail. They don't have to go before a judge to have a bail you know, set. They'll automatically be released. The equivalent of getting a citation, a traffic ticket, with a court date saying appear in court. This blows my mind. I mean, you're essentially... Not only are you making it easy for people to escape the area and flee because they have no skin in the game, they have no bail, but you're making it virtually like a person can commit a crime against someone, instantly turn around if they didn't succeed, and go commit more crimes. Where's the, the exceptions for a risk to people? Second degree murder, I mean, do you realize how second degree murder, how serious that is? It, it, it makes no sense. As a law enforcement officer, I cannot see anything that is helpful in this to the public at all. Second degree murder. Second degree murder is usually defined as an intentional killing without any premeditation. So you get upset, get in a fight with someone and just kill them. You get so upset that you kill someone. You didn't think about it. You didn't plan to do it. You didn't plot it for weeks and days at a time. You sound like a pretty dangerous individual, regardless. Under Illinois second-degree murder laws, in order to get a conviction for the offense, the prosecutor must show beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant killed an individual without lawful justification and either intended to kill or do great bodily harm to that individual, or knew that the act would do so, or knows the act creates a strong probability of causing death or great bodily harm to the individual. Illinois second-degree punishment is already lax. Illinois second-degree murder laws charge the offense as a Class One felony. This carries a sentence of between 4 and 20 years in prison, depending on the leniency of the judge and the circumstances of the crime. A four-year probation term instead of prison may be an option. A maximum fine of $25,000 plus a surcharge of $3,125. Upon release from pre prison, there's a mandatory two-year parole period. So what we're talking about there is what's charged and what a person's actually convicted of are usually two different things. So another thing that happens with this, when you arrest someone for second-degree murder, chances are they're going to get something reduced sentence. And with the, the sentence that is imposed with this, it would be at that reduced level already which it already sounds like they uh, probably are very lax about the way they treat second-degree murder to begin with. So whatever they would reduce it to, any kinds of manslaughter or something like that, they'd probably get even less time in jail. It, it blows my mind that this is taking something that is so serious, downplaying it with bail, downplaying the consequences, and from what I understand, even if they put people into any kind of monitoring, a person can by these new laws, has to be missing from their the place they're supposed to be under house arrest, for example, for more than 48 hours before law enforcement's even allowed to do any, to take any action. So they get like a two-day leeway for running and escaping the, the state. And of course, Illinois is one of those places where they won't have the resources if they have a whole bunch of criminals spread all around the country to go and get them because what it takes is you have to put out, you know, to another state saying, hey, this person's wanted for a murder, second degree murder, and you have to detain them. And when that detainment takes place, they have to have the resources to send officers to go and pick them up because the officers that arrest them in that jurisdiction aren't going to use their resources to, to drive them back to, you know, Chicago or wherever they're, they're from. Instead, Illinois has to use the resources to go and get these people. And if they can't use the resources to go and get these people, they don't have the reach. You know, if you get far enough away, they're going to stop 
trying to reel, reel those people in. So you kill somebody in Chicago, second degree murder charge, you, you flee to Florida, and then Florida arrests you, and then Chicago says, well, that's too far, far for us to go to get them. And they, they basically put, um, you know, remove detainers and stuff outside of a certain distance from where their jurisdiction is at. So it's uh, really not a good thing. You're talking about, you know, the ramifications of this are going to be very high. Uh, murder rates and stuff like that are already through the roof. And Chicago's ability, for example, to solve crimes is really low. People are not aware of this, but what a lot of states that have major cities, what they have is so much of a crime rate that a large portion of their crimes go unsolved. And as their crime rate, the unsolved crime rate, continues to rise, then what happens with the DA's office is they start getting soft on the things that are more difficult to prove. In other words, we're not going to put a lot of resources into this because, you know, we got a 50-50 chance of convicting this person. So what we're going to do is offer them something really light to plead to, or we're going to throw the case out completely, or we're not going to devote the officers, the detectives, the resources to investigate the crime further to try to get the information that we need to convict them so you turn a, a large city that has limited resources into a place that has very high crime and has a very high unsolved crime rate, which then leads to a very lax justice system where you rely more on the things that you can concretely prove and to get those wins to take up your time in court. Because if you're better suited to you know, getting the ones that you can with the time that you have and the resources that you have, letting those ones that are kind of on the edge or very difficult to approve or they ran so far away that the resources to get it and investigate it would be too much trouble, you're going to start letting those go. And the unfortunate side effect is this: of this is you create higher and higher crime. You create more people getting away with crimes, so they feel emboldened to commit even more crimes. And then... Catching up with that after the fact, after you've limited those resources, increased the amount of crime and criminals out there so much where an officer's time is spent arresting the same people so they can give them a ticket so they can let them go again. Meanwhile, they're back at the station writing the report from the first one, so they're still tied up, they're still busy, and the person's already back out on the street. Less and less resources go towards bringing people in, holding them accountable, and it snowballs. And to recover from that later after the fact, after you've defunded the police, takes an incredible amount of people and an incredible amount of money just to get back to the place that you were at before. So mark my words, this policy, within a year's time, so this takes effect in January of 2023. By January 2024, Chicago will be so crime-ridden and will have such a problem that I think even Democrats will be screaming from the rooftops about how bad this is. And the, the whole point that they're trying to make is that somehow bail is racist and that that's why this needs to take place and that for Republicans to stand up against, you know, uh, stand up for the criminal justice system and for law enforcement uh, makes them racist. Um, you know, how about the fact that most of the crime that's going to take place... Let's, let's take Chicago, for example. Most of the crime, while committed by black people, is against black people. So your victims are black. They're the ones that are not getting justice when someone's released with no bail and they get a ticket to appear in court, which I, I, I think you might know. If you have a court appearance for something as serious as second-degree murder, it ain't the next day. It's going to be months, if not years, down the road before a person is called before court for something like that. Um, I don't know what their plan is here. For are they going to have some kind of hearing on, you know, uh, the bail in the interim after that? Because it sounds like they're releasing them until they actually have to appear in court on the charges. Absolutely absurd. You're going to have a lot of people if. You're released like that, 
you're not going to get a chance to have an attorney, your your free public defender, come and meet you at the jail and talk to you about your your case. Instead, you're going to have to go and do that to talk about your case. I don't think that that's going to happen that much. You're going to have a lot more people unprepared when they do go to court. You're going to have a lot more problems with public defenders and everything like that reaching the people that are being charged with these crimes and let go. Uh, this is going to... This is going to snowball into a superstorm of high crime, and just undeniably, it's going to show that you know Democrat policies like this t- they do not work. They have the opposite effect of what they're trying to do. It's going to it's going to turn at least Chicago into a, a hellscape of crime. And watch how these crimes, these listed crimes, will just go through the roof. That is, of course, if they even. St- charge people with these things you know the other thing that'll happen is they'll lower their crime stats by saying well that might be technically might be arson but let's charge it as disorderly conduct or something uh you know another thing that affects the crime stats and makes a a blue you know democrat controlled city look like it's doing better than it is you know they play with the numbers they play with the way that you look at it uh, conviction rates, all this stuff. You know, uh, time will tell. But I'm telling you, this is this is huge. Uh, taking bail to a whole new level of just basically almost eliminating it. You know, you've got some very serious crimes. I'm, I'm still assuming they're going to have bail, but what's the bail going to be? Are they going to start making laws about what's appropriate? You're going to post a hundred dollars bail when you murder somebody? I don't know. This whole thing is dumb. It shows that Democrat policies are dumb. And, you know, give it about a year and a half and we'll see what the effects are. You know, mark my words. I, I'm, I'm 100% right. Uh, you know, I'd bet my, my lifelong career in law enforcement on it. And <laughs> this is insane. Um, so we'll see you in about a year and a half and we can uh, look back at this and have a big, giant, I told you so. Thanks for watching.